Congratulations on reaching the final spot of you tomorrow summit. A bit of energy left. Okay, I'm happy for that. So, welcome everyone now to the most exciting part of our summit and it's of course, as usual, startup pitches. Today, we will have a carefully pre-selected 10 startups from all applications. And is it written in my uh, scenario, they, it is said that they are perky, funny, creative, brave through guys will present their, oh, come on, you know, you know the drill. Startups solve problems, they solve real problems and our job is to pick up the best ones, the best ones that are that should be helped in order to conquer the beautiful world. You, I believe in two days you had a lot of speeches, discussions about the unicorns, etc. But the beauty lies in the details, in real and impactful solutions. So, said that, I'd like to explain you how will we play this short session and what are the game rules. Our format is going to be pretty standard. We have uh, three minutes for the pitch and five minutes for the Q&A of our beautiful jury. Jury have their personal links to evaluate the startups. Please, jury, be objective. I believe everyone already have the tables in front of them, right? And for the general audience, for you to know, we will evaluate uh, startups in five different criteria. Innovation, the level of innovation, scalability, monetization, team, and how was the pitch? Was it influential enough? Did it uh, convince us? And maybe your own personal uh, uh, also attention to them, you know, maybe you had a talk already, you had a beer yesterday, etc. Please include all the details in this and then let's see who are the best ones. Okay, regarding the prize, all the teams are contesting, of course, in front of the very respectful jury that I will announce pretty much soon. But the main prize is the financial support in the amount of about, about, in the amount of 80,000 dollars to enter the European market with the help of the Connect Poland Prize and Lub Lublin Science and Technology Park. Can I ask for applause for this prize? It's pretty, pretty decent amount of money and I have a feeling we have enough of investors here to double up the amount of the prize. Right? Right. Okay, so allow me to present our respectful jury. I'd like to ask for your applause for Cesar Salazar, founder and CEO of Beyond, launched the first fund and accelerator in Mexico City and was critically involved in making around 80 investments in Latin America tech startups. Welcome. Also, we have Jean Saracoglu, a serial entrepreneur and investor with five exits, two as a co-founder and three as a VC. Hello and welcome. Yeah, please applause for him. Also, together with us today, we have Sia Kamali, investment partner of Skycatcher, which is a global investment partnership based in the United States. The firm specializes in software and internet companies with expertise across geographies and business models. Applause. Thank you so much. Also, Sandra Goldbrag, CEO and co-founder of Baltic Sandbox, a startup accelerator and community based in Vilnius, Lithuania. Welcome, Sandra. <laughs> Stanislav Ivanov, founder and partner at Terra Venture. Stanislav, good to see you here also from Tallinn, Estonia. And last but not least, Anna, I'm sorry for a pronunciation, Grzegorz Schick. Yes, project manager at Connect Poland Prize at Lublin Science and Technology Park and a director of the Center for Knowledge and Technology Transfer at Maria Curie Sklodowska University in Lublin, and that's not it, uh, the largest public university in the Eastern Poland, right? Right. <laughs> Applause for that. Okay. 10 amazing startups. Guys, I will announce each and every year for you to know the lineup. The first team that will be pitching is Up Catalyst, the second one, Spline Cloud, the third one, Exen, the fourth one, Organization.gg, the fifth one, Naughty.ai, Zili, Geos, Study Dive, LKYC, and Vanongo. 
This is the lineup, and I'd like to remind you, three minutes for the pitch, and I'd like to invite the first team to pitch. It's Up Catalyst and the founder, Darren. Darren, do we have you? Yeah, no, I want more. I want more applause for the first person to pitch. It's not easy to start the event. Guys, yes. Here we go, the clicker, three minutes. Here's the, the, the red dot, All you right. know, the TEDx have contract. To stand right there, yeah. yeah, yeah, stand Don't here. Don't move yeah. from here. Yeah, yeah, enjoy it, enjoy it. It's going to be fun. Thanks. We'll see. Oh, hello, everyone. My name is Darren Clear from Up Catalyst. We're a leading supplier to like, sustainable carbon materials for electrical vehicles, among other things. One of the main challenges for the electrical vehicle market, just to speak of one market, is there's going to be a need for raw materials. By 2030, there's going to be over 50 times more batteries and raw materials needed for those batteries. For the European battery manufacturers, this is going to be a problem. Because currently, the main producers of graphite, yeah, as you can see on this map, China, India, Af one country in Africa, Brazil, and Canada. Where does this leave Europe? It leaves a very expensive process to ship all these materials over. Europe is currently importing hundreds of thousands of tons of graphite every single year. However, our solution is to produce it right here in Europe. It takes a negative in climate change. We all know about climate change and what causes it, excess CO2. We take this CO2 and we reverse that negative feedback loop to something positive, the material that could be used in Batteries, it could be used in a number of different applications, too numerous to mention, and that's just one of our products. The uniqueness is our synthesis method. We already have a public, publicized patent, and we're currently in the process of filing another patent for our reactor technology. We do have three more patents in the works over the next the three years. Additionally, what makes us very special is our team. But before that, let me get to the better price. We, normally, graphite is very heavy, intense with carbon and its impact on the environment. Ours is over 400 times less. We do not mine it. We do not synthesize it through petroleum products or methane gas. This is the potential. Currently, we have LOIs, as you can see, from Skeleton, from Axe Nobel. Our beachhead market is primarily academic research institutions. I've dealt with a number of research institutions myself. We have some samples out there. We've also got some LOIs in a couple of different distribution networks in Asia, which has actually got me very excited because we're well positioned in Asia. Currently, it's 500 million, 10 billion, 24 billion, 500 billion, 2030 alone. 2030 is going to be over 145 million electrical vehicles, and each one uses over 70 kilograms of graphite. Darren, 20 seconds left. I hear you. It, this is our projections. We currently have kilogram scale. We plan to, we're on track to go to ton scale next year. But this is our team. We have a lot of PhDs with our team with lots of experience in material science, lots of experience in sales and marketing. And this is what we're looking to do for pre-seed investment. And time's up. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. That was the first pitch. Three Please minutes. applaud. Okay, thank you. You're almost on time. Congratulations. Yeah, well, okay, okay minutes. five minutes for the Q&A. Dear jury, who wants to ask the first question? Yeah. Yep, yeah. sure. What is, what is the price difference between imported and yours? Well, the price difference is mainly about production. That's where our problem is. Our, as a company, we have kilogram scale. In terms of actual costs of taking the material, a raw material is a CO2. We can take that from the air, we can take that from industrial chimneys. Currently, our kilograms are at 1,300 per kilogram, which is a little pricey for industry. What we're trying to get to is, kilo, is ton scales so where we can enter an in industry. We've already got some samples out there, paint manufacturers, some sealants, uh, different adhesive companies, rubber and plastics, but again, we keep coming back to our production scale. At kilogram scale, we're barely counts a minnow for industry. We need at least tons scale on a monthly basis, weekly basis, preferably. So when you're at scale, you don't know the difference of price. So the price is going to go less. The more we produce, the lower the price goes. Right now, the best we can do, 
for kilogram, we can make a profit because we have salaries to pay, like every other company, is 1,300. We get to scale up to ton scale, we expect to go down to between 900 to 1,000 euros per kilogram, okay. which you know is not cheap, but it's certainly within the margin range of what's already out there, two ball, what have you. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. Yep. if the price difference is as such, then maybe the value is in eliminating the carbon dioxide, and in that case, is it a totally clean process, or there are still some residues and leftovers as well? Darren, you can lie. It's, it's a show. Do a show. I'm sorry? No, I'll get ready. For starters, our product is one of the purest carbon products out there in the market. It's not 100% carbon, sad to say. There are at least some minor impurities. There's been issues, in the, especially in the biomedical field, which is, ties into my background in biotech. But our product is about as close to 100% carbon as we know on the market. So aside from the sustainability, which is huge because we have to go carbon neutral, much preferably much sooner than later, we're also a very pure product, which once we get the ton scale, I can move into the biomedical field and try to market there, which is what kind of gets me excited working with this company. So. Thank you. Uh, I, got, I got a question about the patent. Is it in international patent or is it national? It's like you're the owner of this um, patent? We are the owner. I mean, international, well, that's uh, <laughs> EU. It's international technically, but again, we are working in America as well. I can't elaborate too much on details, but we are in process of making our patent in America, not just the EU as well. So. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Stanislav? How much money you need to raise in order to get to tons production scale? Uh, on a low figure, we were looking for 800,000. Uh, just to start, we already got yes, offers on the table. I can't go into detail for obvious reasons, but my CEO is look, evaluating different offers and seeing who wants enough equity for what they're offering, who wants maybe a little, who's maybe a little too, too greedy on equity. But to get the ton scale, uh, eight. 800,000 will be a nice start. Uh, of course, there's going to be a lot of sales and marketing involved with that, but I, IP protection, patent protection, but the reactors that we need to get the ton scale, that, that is not as expensive as it may seem, because we can make that through container, you know, containers and just put the infrastructure inside the container. I think that's it. Thank you so okay. much. That was the first team up, Catalyst and Darren Clare. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if anyone knows someone from European Commission in charge for the European Green Deal, just introduce those guys. I think they need, they, they need to speak. Okay, let's move on to our next pitch, and I'd like to invite the second team, Spline Cloud, and the founder, Vadim. <laughs> Applause! <laughs> You're good to go? Hi everyone, I'm very glad to be here at this stage and speak about the problems of mechanical engineers. Uh, yesterday at the section Industry 4.0, Alexei gave us a great overview of the services of the fourth generation that are aimed to improve productivity of the companies. And our product, Spline Cloud, is exactly that kind of service. It's a knowledge management platform for engineers that makes their work more creative and productive. But before we jump into details how we achieve this, let's take a look at how engineers design new products. On their journey from idea to verified concept, engineers apply existing knowledge to derive draft concepts, after which they perform a number of calculations and simulations. At exactly at this stage, a new knowledge appears. This new knowledge can be later used on other projects to simplify and speed up design process. However, this process is tricky because uh, data has to be extracted from various representations and converted into the form that is easy to use in calculations. And engineers struggle with this. They waste lots of time because, because of the variety of software and data formats, because of the complexity of existing tools for data processing, and simply because there is no standard of reusable data. So we created Splunk Cloud to fix this problem. It's a cloud platform with essential set of tools for engineers to make their data accessible and reusable. Reusability is in the hearts of Spline Cloud. We actually provide own standard of reusable data. But not only this. 
Uh, currently, engineers are doomed to use various services for different purposes to process and exchange their data and computer code. With Spline Cloud, this is not a problem. We leave this, all this, these tools behind by providing ultimate reusability and high collaboration abilities. So now engineers can use a single platform uh, to process and exchange their data. And uh, we operate based on subscriptions. We have paid sub uh, we have free subscription for open data. I'm sorry, the clicker is not working. And uh, we have uh, subscription. Yeah, and we have paid subscription for the data with restricted access. So our obtainable market is estimated, thank you, is estimated at the level of 33 million US dollars. And we plan to reach this in four years. Now we need to spend some time on research and development. And for this, we are raising 280,000 US dollars. Uh, this money will be split equally between research and development and marketing and sales. Currently, we are at the prototype stage and we are negotiating first pilot projects. Uh, we have a great team. We have experience in aerospace engineering, in IT and entrepreneurship. Uh, actually, me and my co-founder, Dennis, we already worked on IT startup. So uh, thank you for attention and I will gladly answer any of your questions. Thank you so much. That was an amazing pitch, Vadim. Thank you. Their jury? John? Yeah. Well, it's such a range, uh, I mean, huge range of mechanical like, engineering applications, like uh, the, from engine design to gearbox and then the propeller and the, you know, fluid mechanics. What is the use case that is being actually used on the platform at the moment? Yeah, it's a very great question. If you will switch back the presentation, I have a special slide to uh, support my answer. Can we ask the presentation to come back on the screen, please? Uh, yeah, but you can okay. use it. So, uh, for example, uh, engineer design. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So, for example, uh, when engineer design something like maybe turbine or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, they waste time on simulations. And this element uh, can be later reused on other design because it's just a part of some system. And uh, in order to simplify this process and free up the time, uh, it is easy to run several simulations for different input parameters, then uh, build approximation, which is uh, some kind of response model that approximates this. And another engineer that is doing systems engineering uh, is not, uh, there is no need to run simulation again because uh, this, uh, he can use this approximation. And this saves a lot of time and uh, gives some agility to the process of engineering. So those engineers who are responsible for running simulation, they upload their results. And those uh, engineers who consume the uh, results of simulations, they can consume it without need to rerun simulation again because uh, there is a special model for that. So, I mean, at the moment, like a turbine design is like the central use case uh, or... It's anything. It's anything, it's anything, anything mechanical which, is, uh, which requires some optimization. For example, uh, valve or maybe other uh, component, okay. any mechanical component. Anything goes. Okay, thank you. How do you ensure the quality? I mean, you are saying like one engineer runs simulation, then the other are using it. So how the other guy should, why, why he should trust the first guy? Okay, uh, very nice question. Uh, the answer would be that uh, the system uh, is a cloud service and we imp implement uh, some kind of rating. Uh, if, if we talk about open, open variant of Spline Cloud with open data, uh, we introduce uh, something like uh, similar to Stack Overflow when you have badges, when you have reputation, and those engineers uh, who consume this data, they can see who is the author of that data. Is it trustable? Maybe it's some institution. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So they can trust that. And uh, in, inside companies, uh, or with uh, the Spline Cloud on premises, uh, it's uh, all about the roles. It's distribution of the roles. So if the person who uploads a data is responsible for that, then the consumer knows that uh, this is a trustful data. Sandra? Hi, yeah, what's your go-to-market strategy? Uh, we plan to uh, find partners. Uh, the, first, uh, uh, the first point is to find par partners who are uh, integrators of software in, in the companies. So we already started doing this. Um, 
another uh, strategy is like additional points is uh, to present our products on conferences uh, to find our consumers best clients who will uh, distribute knowledge about our platform we will reach universities non-profit organizations who uh, do research and uh, by this we will uh, like distribute so what's your expected customer acquisition cost? Uh, very good question. Uh, we have several models which give us different values. I can't uh, say you uh, exactly that because we haven't run uh, our pilots, we'll, which will show us which is exactly that. Uh, but we un uh, estimate that in three years, our customer lifetime value uh, to cu customer acquisition will be at about five, uh, ratio five. Okay, and the last question here. Yeah, what's the current progress? And if you're pre-product, if you are pre-MVP, then what is the MVP? <laughs> Good question. Uh, we have a prototype, and uh, this prototype we can already use to run pilot project because it has uh, core features uh, uh, that we can use, but uh, it misses some collaboration things that we want to implement, and we want to do some research to implement all this uh, very basic services for collaboration, and that's it. It will be done. Okay, thank you so much. That was the second team, thank Spline you. Cloud, and the founder of Adim Pasco. <laughs> okay, let's move on to our third pitch, and I'd like to invite on the stage with a round of applause the team Exen and Sergi Alexenko. Thank you. Well, uh, hello everyone. My name is Sergey, uh, and I'm the co-founder of Exxon. Well, uh, nowadays, uh, sustainable consumption is uh, uh, not just a global trend, it's our reality, reality we, we, we live in. And uh, take, for example, the shift towards renewables, towards, towards uh, recycling practices, towards effective energy consumption and other things people do to make it uh, make their consumption sustainable um, and uh, the main idea to keep in mind though is that uh, uh, all such global initiatives start with uh, just single person's consumption and habits so we create software and hardware solution for sustainable energy consumption and uh, so in most cases, we don't know what our energy consumption, monthly energy consumption consists of. Uh, we don't know how much we, we pay for using our laptops, for using our fridges, uh, washing machines, and other appliances we have in our homes. And uh, we don't know, is it, do they work correctly, or even if they are effective, and uh, the other thing that each of us had once left something on by accident, and it's not the ma a matter of uh, only energy efficiency, but also uh, our safety. Um, so our solution is uh, allows to the user take under control uh, his consumption, his or her consumption, and. Uh, change, allows, allows to change uh, the consumption habits to make it more conscious, more sustainable, and more effective. So our device is installed in your homes or apartment switchboard, and uh, it collects data on your consumption. Uh, then it's proceeded with the AI, and uh, allows you to understand how much energy uses each device individually. And uh, the system takes the data on that consumption and forecasts for you your future consumption, how much will it cost, and generate uh, personalized energy saving tips. Sergey, 20 seconds left. Uh, here's our market opportunities about the households, and 75% uh, of the households are energy efficient. This is our competitors, uh, two of them work in USA, and only two of them, Sense and Powerix, have 
uh, AI. This is our roadmap, our <laughs> revenue streams, our team. And the time <laughs> is up. Yeah. And proceed. It's round. a good slide to finish your pitch. Yeah. You know? Dear jury, the main thing, actually. you definitely have questions about the AI, right? Stanislav. <laughs> yeah, could you please unpack the AI par uh, part? Like, what exactly is the AI predict and why you need the AI there? Because uh, uh, each device that we use, it has his own pattern that actually is a current form. And with this current form, they like the, the, the points we have on the graph, if the AI will understand what exactly that is, what exactly device that is, what is working. Uh, yes, Sandra? Still the question, why do you need AI? I mean, like, uh, won't some kind of simple algorithm be able to do this, no? Uh, because... Um, you showed a roadmap, maybe there's an answer. Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> you should. So, yeah, the, the I needed it to make, like, uh, uh, automatically to find the what exactly is working. So, algorithm can do it, but... Uh, AI is needed for make it more independent and find the device by itself. Anna? Uh, could you tell me uh, something about the team? <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. So this is our team. Actually me. <laughs> Co <laughs> Co-founder. Co-founder Artur. Uh, so this is our also Artyom, hardware engineer, he's developing the device. And uh, software engineer, Denise, he helps us to develop the app. And uh, advisors, this is uh, Alexander Vladimir Shostovchuk. He is uh, the doctor of technical sciences in the KPE. Uh, so, and uh, he's interested, his interests are smart metering, uh, distributed energy resources, and Eugenie is the uh, IoT and electrical engineer. So all these positions are like connected with our startup. And this is, we having the expertise we need. Yes, what one more question. I don't know if it's too early, but what would be your like uh, monetization model throughout time? Mind your monetization How model. How will you ah, earn money? Yeah. How would you make okay, money yeah. throughout time? So we are planning to uh, get to arrange a device sales and the uh, device could be sold to different people just who for the who want to make the people who want to change their uh, consumption habits or to some uh, residential companies that want to take like uh, monitoring of the utilities of their property and uh, data driven driving revenue is uh, the idea that to provide different companies with the data about energy consumption, about uh, users' habits, and so on. Sergey, who is your best client? Best client? Yeah. Best client is the person who wants to be sustainable okay. and has sustain to have sustainable habits. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. That Thanks was the lot. third pitch. Thanks. Can you place it on the table, please? Okay, let's move on to our next startup pitching. I'd like to invite on the stage organization.gg and the founder, Dima. Applause for him. Hi everyone, my name is Dima. I'm the CEO at organization.gg, um, uh, an online marketplace where um, for live streamed experiences in the gaming multiverse. So a uh, short intro of the team. I'm a hustler with a background in finance and biz dev. I was also running an esports organization before. Denise, he's the CTO with over 10 years of engineering, engineering background. Anton, very talented designer. We also have seven other team members in the team, all passionate about gaming. So I have a question for you. Um, have you ever dreamed of playing with your favorite pro? Anyone? Okay, I did. Um, however, the experience is not always as we dream of it. Um, 
But in online gaming, dreams actually come true. So with Organization GG, anyone can actually play and interact with their favorite streamers. And these online interactions are called experiences. And they can vary from during a show match with another streamer, um, or taking your fans and watching a movie together with them, or playing games within games like in Roblox or Fortnite Creative. And we started off with uh, experiences on Counter-Strike GO, but we're going to be adding new games and thousands of new experiences. And we're also streaming platform agnostic. So by connecting streamers with their viewers, we're actually creating um, an income for, for the streamers. And additionally, we let brands to reach Gen Z by sponsoring these experiences uh, through our unique call to action integration. And essentially, this also creates an additional revenue stream for the streamers. So uh, we are live since December 2020. Uh, we have hosted over 1,100 experiences. And this number has been growing by 35% month over month. We onboarded over six, um, 600 streamers. And we are in touch with a number of brands and ad, ad agencies to integrate them onto the platform. Um, so our uh, business model is based on the commissions. So we take roughly 30% from every successful experience that is taking place on the platform. Um, and in return, we provide a fully uh, automated infrastructure that includes payments, support, and we also run our game servers. So our big vision is to be the discovery and monetization platform for all online experiences in the gaming metaverse. So you can think of it as Eventbrite for experiences in online gaming. Um, so our core, um, core target audience are streamers, and you might know that their number has been growing significantly. In the last year, it's more than doubled, and now they account for over 12 million. And they have an audience of hundreds of millions of viewers who spent over 25 billion US dollars on video game skins. So that's obviously a big and a growing market. Uh, we already raised our pre-seed round. Uh, we raised 600,000, and uh, we plan on closing our seed round in the beginning of next year, a 2 million seed round. Uh, most of it is going to be spent on adding new games and entering the US market. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dima. Their jury. Yes, let's start here. Uh, one mm -hmm. of my portfolio companies has a similar experience uh, with this. They're an online gaming marketplace, and mm -hmm. they try to expand into uh, being trained by the experts. So it's like, like a play, but also you're getting trained by them. The problem that they come across is the frequency. Like mm -hmm. uh, players one are interested in doing that, but after two or three sessions, it ends and uh, they didn't see a lot of growth in that respect. What is your metrics with that regard? That's an excellent question, and coaching is just one of the types of experience that our platform allows to do. So we're not locked into one type of experience, we're actually able to do thousands of them. And just to give you an example, for example, in GTA, for example, there are like tens of thousands of private servers where people do like role-playing, where a guy can be like a pizza delivery guy and he, he runs through that role. The next day he can be like a mafia guy or they could be like um, matches played five versus five or one wingman one against one. So like we have thousands of, of different experiences. But so I mean, in, in reality, what is the frequency of a user coming back again and trying a different experience or the same experience over and over? Yeah, we currently are uh, focused on Counter-Strike Go and when we have two experiences on the platform, so it was just like our MVP. But still, even with having one experience, um, we, we have like 20% of recurring users out of those 14,000 that are currently using the platform. And these users, we haven't even paid a single do dollar to attract them because 85% of our traffic is referral. So streamers, since they earn money on our platform, they're promoting it to their own viewers. Um, so although we are a two-sided marketplace, we only need to focus on the streamer side. Okay. It's like infinite yep. vehicle, right? Okay. Uh, hopefully. Hi, Dima. Good Hello. Great pitch. Um, okay. Question for you. What is your economic moat against other platforms? Because I think I've seen a few of these. So would love just to understand what do you think is going to be your moat? Um, the, mo the, the economic oh. model? Yeah. Or? No, moat. Moat meaning... What's going to differentiate Barrier you? Barrier to entry. Barrier to entry. Okay. Yep. 
Um, since we do full integrations with the, with the games, we're able to get the data, we're able to get the statistics. Um, and since we do have the data, we actually implement it into gamification of the platform. So if both either the streamer or the fan started playing on our platform, he starts to develop his own profile uh, with his own rankings. So this creates sort of um, a lock on the platform for him, so he doesn't have any incentives to move on to the other one. Uh, I see an uh, adverse selection problem, and please help me understand what am I missing. Mm -hmm. So what I see is that the most uh, successful game, like uh, like gamers or like uh, celebrities, will get m way more money doing product placement and other things that they're al already couldn't get, already getting hundreds of thousands of dollars doing other things, mm -hmm. uh, and those are the ones that are dragging uh, if, if initial traction to the platform. So eventually, you get like the people in the middle who are not really celebrities, uh, and it might not be as interesting to, to the gamers themselves? That's um, a good comment. And we actually, uh, that's, that was one of the hypotheses that we tested. So we thought like our platform is going to be used by only the top notch guys, or, or not even them, because they're already you know, satisfied. Uh, so we were tackling like the middle, the medium sized guys. And there are a lot of them. So if you look at the Twitch data, there are like 12 million streamers out there. Only 12 or only 200,000 of them have over 25 concurrent viewers, meaning that's less than, and only 0.3% of them are partners on Twitch. So only these guys are making money. But there are 12 million <laughs> people out there. So they're looking for tools to be making money. And what we did, we did um, a test with, uh, with Polish streamers, for example, who had, a sh she's a streamer with uh, 100 concurrent viewers, and she was able to make $60 per one game. Um, and she only spent 40 minutes uh, doing that. And the, the reason why she, w one of the um, differentiating points is that um, we, in every experience, there's a limited amount of slots for the fans to participate, but there are a lot of fans willing to join. So we integrated sweepstake mechanics that allows everyone to sort of pitch in, and this creates a price pool that is then split between the streamers. So they don't have to put a price tag like, oh, you have to pay five dollars to play uh, to play with me. We we don't do that. Uh, we are more creative about that. Um, so the medium guys are actually the core audience that we're going after, and there are hundreds of thousands of them. And that's it. We're out of time. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Applause. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The clicker. Could could you please there, please? Yeah, and micro-influencers are the answer, right? Okay, let's move on to our number five. The team number five, it's Noti.ai and the founder, Natalia. Please, applause her. <laughs> Natalia, welcome on stage. Hi. My name is Natalie. I'm a CEO at Noti. The future of work has been permanently changed. When the pandemic started, business professionals all around the globe started working from home, and what was called temporary measure has now become our new normal. According to Gartner, 74% of companies will continue working from home even after pandemic. By 2024, only 25% of meetings will be held offline, and the rest are going digital. Uh, that uh, trends caused huge growth in video conferencing solution market, and it's just the beginning. It's great for them, but not that great for us. Because every single day, me, you, and half a billion people all around the globe are participating in video calls. And what if I say that we are transmitting only 20% of information out of it, and 80% is lost forever? Digital fatigue and distraction problem is growing so fast that actually became new subject to scientific research. And average week of business professionals look like this. Plenty of video calls and no time to actually work. What if I say that we know how to make meeting great again? Not as a platform transforming video calls into actions. It takes you a few seconds to set up and all your conversation will be automatically transcribed, um, my clicker is not working, uh, uh, so you can uh, easily tag 
uh, highlight and gain your meeting uh, insights uh, in a second. Um, then uh, easily share your information throughout your organization um, and, uh, or, or send it to your task manager or CRM system. Now you will have all your meeting data uh, housed in one place and uh, it's becoming your personal search engine and al an uh, analytics. And all your team can be on the same page because everything now is searchable. So Noti is saving t uh, money for the companies and is making your employees much more happier and productive. Uh, we already integrated with Google Meet. Uh, since, the, uh, uh, since the first day, we organically grow 500 customers that are located on all continents. And on our next big stop is a Zoom integration. We have a clear business model and will charge our customers for bringing productivity to their meetings. We do have competitors, but Noti is focused on building Knowledge Keeper uh, the place where all your meeting data will be organized and structured so you can find everything easily in a second by just asking your question. We are starting on a huge market that is growing exponentially. So meet the team. It's Macola and Marco on tech side. It's Julia and me, Natalie, taking care of product management and marketing. We also have a team of advisors that is helping us on our way. And now we are in the middle of a uh, fundraising pre-seed round, so join us and let's build the future of work together. My name is Natalie, I'm CEO at Naughty AI. thank you. Thank you so much for an amazing pitch. There, Jure, yes, Stanislav. Um, how far are you with the product? I mean, is it only transcription? Are you using third-party technology or it's inside, in-house and the, the mechanics of extraction, the content, how far you are with this? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we're already live for six months already. Uh, we have two components of AI in our product. The first one is a speech to text that is transforming audio to text. And the second one, we're using third party services for that. Uh, and the second uh, component is NLP technologies that is helping us with summarization uh, and uh, extracting all inf uh, important information out of it. And for those, we are using uh, our technology. Uh, on the team, I haven't seen the NLP experience. Uh, we have uh, two guys, uh, two tech guy, uh, two tech guys. Uh, my clicker is not working again. Okay, so we have uh, two developers that are f uh, working full time that build Naughty by themselves. We also have two advisors with uh, with great technical uh, experience, so they are supporting uh, our team uh, there. And uh, also, uh, after we will close the round, we will. Uh, expand a little bit uh, team to the risk uh, technology side. Uh, do you measure uh, the usage of the product? Uh, I mean, you, you, you sold, you onboarded the customer, mm -hmm. but do you check whether they're continuing to use uh, it often? And uh, what is the growth rate of that? Uh, yeah, surely. Uh, we are taking great uh, care of uh, feedback and of uh, looking at the analytics of the usage. We are tracking uh, how often uh, users are uh, using the product uh, during the week, during the month, but also how they are interacting. So basically what functions they are using. Are they using only transcription services or summarization is working for already for them and they are using it. We are uh, having uh, interviews happening from the day one uh, when it was problem uh, interview and now when it's a uh, solution. Also for testing like uh, business model and so on. So. Uh, the uh, number of users are growing 10% uh, uh, by week, but it's uh, all happening organically since today we didn't use any marketing tools. So that's what, uh, why we are fundraising money to boost uh, growth uh, a little bit, Sandra? to move faster. Yeah, how do you acquire your users kind of in, in who your customer personas like, what those people? Uh, yes, I have a, a slide for it. So. As of today, we have uh, those customer portraits. Mainly they are representatives from IT industries. They are product project managers, business analysts, basically all business professionals that are spending more than 30% uh, of their time in video calls. Uh, 
uh, all those was uh, made manually, let's say, within our uh, network and uh, with manual outreach. Uh, since uh, st starting uh, from um, uh, summer, we started working on uh, SEO and it's al also uh, helping us. But uh, with uh, uh, after we will uh, uh, we will have our marketing experiments done, we would. Uh, try to move a little bit faster on those uh, segments first. And also we have a uh, few uh, representatives from ITR and sales um, industries, and we will also test them. So yeah, thank you. Amazing. And the last question here. Hi, Natalie. I'm familiar with your competitor. I think it's Otter. Yeah. It's, it wasn't clear to me what makes you different compared to them. Um, cause that part wasn't clear to me if you could just uh, emphasize that yeah yeah sure so uh, we have a lot of competitors and uh, otter is one of the greatest but we are focused on uh, building knowledge keeper we want not only to tr uh, they uh, are more focused on transcribing services as you know they have their own speech text technology and they are and they have different segment as it they are looking for we are uh, uh, looking uh, to build knowledge keeper we are uh, when we will, um, that's why we want to integrate with ev basically every video conferencing uh, solutions that business professionals are using and gather information from all of those uh, conversations happening then to uh, structure and to get a meeting analytics to the customer so we, uh, they can easily use it in a second. So basically if uh, uh, you want to find something, some, some information that's raised in other depart uh, departments, you can easily ask a question. It, uh, it will uh, mm, uh, get accessible for you uh, because like the meetings are categorized or tagged uh, for like sales uh, meetings or pr product meetings. So data is becoming actions, actually. And that's it. We're out of time. Thank you so much, Natalie. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Five startups you already seen. We have five more startups to go. Okay, next team, Zili and the founder, Alina. Please join me on stage. Uh, hello for everyone. My name is Alina and I'm a product manager at Zili. Zili is a mobile first website builder. So do you know that 80% of entrepreneurs from India use smartphone as the only device? So our target audience is more than 80 million entrepreneurs from Africa and India from about first countries. The problem that we solve is absence of possibility to quickly create and promote a website for business from smartphone. And our solution is a builder for commercial website with built-in tools for online sales and online advertising from smartphone. Uh, you will need only your phone to create a website in 15 minutes in Zilli and to launch an advertising campaign. And CRM system and analytics will connect automatically. So Zilli today has more than 1,500 users and more than 100 paying customers. And the morale of our product is more than $1,000. Uh, existing solutions such as uh, Wix, Squarespace didn't give an opportunity to launch an advertising campaign. And such products as WordPress, Tilda, didn't give an opportunity to create a website from mobile phone. While Zilli is a mobile website builder with, uh, and offers uh, launching advertising from mobile application. So uh, our business model is SaaS Freemium, where website creation and support for free and after the trial period, uh, subscription from $9.99 per month. Uh, as I told earlier, we have an MRR, and after we launched an uh, advertising campaign and uh, attracted our customers, we realized that our uh, unit economy is profitable. And uh, our customer acquisition cost is $25, and lifetime value is $170. Our go-to-market strategy is to first of all to place our mobile application on App Store and Google Play, to launch an advertising campaign on Facebook and Google, and to promote a referral program among entrepreneurs. So uh, we, uh, we started working with our team seven years ago, and Dmitry Semeluk, our CEO, uh, has more than seven years of experience in digital marketing, where he attracted more than one million customers to the client's projects. Our uh, Yaroslav Semeluk, our CMO, was the head of the sales department when he increased the turnover of agency to $700,000 per year. 
And Kostya Pshenichny, our CDO, created a mobile application with MRR more than $100,000. So with this team of winners, we will create the best solution for online business in smartphone. Thank you. Thank you so much. We still have half a minute left, amazing. Can you, can you clarify yes. from, from the product perspective, what are the things that you're doing for your customer regarding the advertising component of the, of the product? Uh, so, yes, uh, from our mobile application, an entrepreneur can launch an advertising campaign to Google, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, he can control all analytics from our mobile application and uh, like uh, receive new requests and uh, to and uh, he have uh, he has like uh, his own CRM system. So the point is clear in terms of the mobile. Uh, version, I mean, uh, uh, but the VIX and so on are in that space as well. So your assumption is pretty much like combining this mobile development platform with uh, advertising offering. And uh, you believe that this is going to be a significant differentiator uh, or it's just uh, your assumption. I mean, are you backing this with some insights or uh, customer feedback because your growth you're growing, but still in a kind of a really at the beginning, at a mediocre stage. Uh, so do you have more proof that customer wants these two combination at one package, this bundling? Uh, so as I understand your question, we know that uh, in uh, India, uh, there are more than uh, more than uh, 300,000 people are search, uh, search uh, mobile, web, mobile website builder every month. So, and Wix is really a complex solution for them actually, because they, uh, this product made for professionals. And uh, our product is really uh, easy because, and uh, as I told earlier, we, uh, you need only 15 minutes to create a website in only five minutes. So we have really easy way to launch an advertising and really easy way to uh, like uh, develop your product in, uh, your, uh, develop your product in uh, internet. Dear jury. Thank you so much. I Thank think you. it's clear. That was the Zili and Alina Wonderenko. Okay, let's move on to our... Yeah. Thank you. One, two, three. Yes, the six. The team name Kios and the founder Natalia. Natalia, please join me on stage. Was that the correct way to pronounce the project? Uh, hello everyone, I'm Natalia and I'm a founder and CEO at Geos, an interactive platform for remote and blended learning of math and critical thinking. Uh, our story started from my own pain. I have two sons and I wanted to them a high quality education and self-realization. And uh, what I heard from the teachers was our main goal to bring our students to the final exams. I wanted more to my children. That is how the idea of the creation of alternative private schools uh, came to me. And uh, I founded several private schools in Kyiv and Lviv. But main issue of private schools uh, that is that uh, they are uh, hard to scale. There are more than 1.2 billion school children in the world and all of them need to study. Another issue uh, is that our kids are not engaged in the educational process. They were born in the digital age and are completely uninterested in old school materials. My ambitious goal was uh, to change the system and to bring uh, interest in modern affordable content globally. Uh, this inspired me to launch GEOS. Uh, we created uh, GEOS courses for blended learning with interactive video lectures, gamification, scoring system, and awards. We took into account eclipse thinking of our kids. Uh, we have grown 10 times uh, during the quarantine period and reached more than 100,000 uh, signups. And uh, uh, right now we have near 8,000 paying users. 
Um, besides our unique methodology uh, with TikTok style lessons, uh, we unite tutoring, interactive learning content and flexible course builder in our platform. Uh, global e-learning market has great opportunities uh, and tech is skyrocketing now. Uh, we launched in 2019, now we are growing fast and we plan to reach 10 million users in, sept in September 2025. We have a strong team with educational and technological background, proven track record and a big vision to change the system. Uh, we have a lot of achievements and raised a round of smart money recently. Uh, now, we are, uh, our big idea uh, is to reach 10 million of happy kids from all around the world, uh, learning math and developing critical thinking with GEOS. We are interested in smart investments and strategic partnerships. Welcome to the world of GEOS. Thank you so much. Dear jury. How are you measuring a student progress? Uh, uh, we uh, have a lot of uh, questionnaires uh, and we communicate with teachers and with students and we have a lot of uh, um, photos and uh, exciting uh, information about, uh, uh, about differences uh, before and after. And for example, we have one example to several of the f fifth grade uh, uh, classes one of them uh, study uh, f uh, through our platform, another without. And the difference uh, uh, was uh, near 30% in the final exams. Have you run any of these studies at scale, like with a larger sample? Uh, we, we are scaling right now. We, uh, we scale our project to the US market right now. Uh, sorry, the, um, so have you tested the academic results throughout a larger sample of kids? Uh, we have uh, uh, dashboards uh, and uh, uh, every teacher and every uh, parent uh, can track uh, the progress of children uh, before studying and after studying. And we, we can see this. Sandra? Yeah, okay. Uh, I haven't seen on the slide, what's your MRR now? We haven't a slide about MRR, I can tell you. <laughs> we have a slide about uh, our growth and our customer acquisition cost and LTV. Uh, right now, our MRR near uh, $12,000 uh, and we are growing now. And we are in Ukraine yet, uh, but uh, we have uh, tested our platform in the US market and, uh, and took first, uh, first uh, our clients. So teachers create the content through your platform, create their own custom content, right? They it's can like do it. We have our own interactive uh, uh, library okay. and teach, uh, we have flexible course builder and teacher, okay. uh, teacher can modify our uh, lessons and create their own lessons. And yeah. the content is at the moment designed for Ukraine and Ukrainian students and mathematics courses available in Ukraine. Am Not I only right? Ukraine, uh, we adapt our program to the US market and English speaking students. We have three languages on our platform, Ukrainian, Russian and English, and we plan to scale it uh, to Spanish uh, speaking uh, markets. Okay. Dear jury, do we have questions? Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. That was Thank the you. team <laughs> Gios and Natalia. Three teams left to go, and I'd like to invite Study Dive and the founder, Yuri. So, hi everyone, my name is Yuri, and I am CEO and co founder at Study Dive. And in simple, we help companies outsource learning and development of their employees. I will not tell you about the importance of upskilling and reskilling of employees. That would be a waste of time. But currently, in many companies, this process looks like, looks like this. It starts with needs identification, usually with the help of individual development plans. And then companies spend enormous resources on content procurement, management, promotion, and so on and so on. 
as a result, managers and employees very often do this process to put a tick and leave HR in peace. Why it happens? Because in many companies, still managers are expected to work on the employees upskilling. The only problem is they don't have time for it. But they have also the experience of outsourcing different sources, uh, different types of work, like HR, accounting, IT, and so on and so on. That's why we decided to offer them an opportunity to outsource learning and development of their employees. How do we do it? We have two parts of the product. The first one is the platform, which offers the company an opportunity to overview, analytics, monitor the progress, and so on and so on. But the key thing is, in addition to the platform, we offer a real learning advisor who helps an employee to define learning goals, define learning activities, reflect on his learning experience, but the key thing to keep a learning discipline. A tech market has been developing in certain stages. Firstly, it was learning management system, software which you needed to fill in with content. That's what L&Ds and HR mainly spend time on, wasting it. That's why learning experience platform appeared who started to aggregate the content. But just think about yourself, how many courses in Coursera you started and how many you went further than the third lecture. That's why we came up with a solution which in addition to the software, to the platform, gives a real person, your family doctor in education. Uh, we worked in the corporate sector for over two years, helping different companies to outsource their learning and development activities. But with this problem of individual development planning, planning, we came up in September last year, and by now we already have more than 100 to 200 companies registered. We have more than 40 customers in the sales funnel, and we have eight and growing paying customers. Our business model is simple. It's us. Go to market strategy. We mainly go from peer to peer, from an employee to an employee. In our milestones, as I said, we tested the idea in September, launched MVP in December. Currently, we're getting to product market fit, and that's the key problem where we need financial support to move a bit faster and to prepare for international expansion. And as a team, we have an experience in developing B2B platforms, and ourselves, we have an experience of working in corporate, in SMBs, being managers in different countries. Yeah, if you want here. to make learning a habit, Join us today. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Yuri. <laughs> actually, it's very interesting. I usually break on Coursera on the third, actually, lecture myself. And I guess that there are managers who have been thinking about education of the employees, but somehow beer, friends, other tasks. Alcohol is the answer. You're yeah. right. <laughs> okay, Stanislav. So, do you plan in the future to replace the human part of the solution with some kind of automation? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, the idea is that, on the one hand, to automate as many as possible parts of the ones which are currently done by this live person, but still to leave it as a, as, a, as a part of the product. Why? Just think when you want to do some sport, when you, ha when you think that, okay, on Friday I will do sport, uh, beer and other cinema things appear. If you have an appointment with the, with the coach, the probability that you will be there is much higher. That's why we want to have this person with whom an employee has at least once per month this meeting, and he knows that it's in his candle calendar. Why? To keep the learning discipline. How are you acquiring the, um, the coaches? Uh, so currently, we have a couple of them within the team, and also, um, but we also started adding them slightly, slightly to the platform. Unfortunately, a big part of this task is still going outside the platform. We still need to add and automate the things. Uh, the prototype of this learning advisor, it's a person who has experience in HR or L&D and has a coach certification. They're not coaches, they're learning advisors, but they need to have at least coaching certification to be able to work with an employee. What is the expected income of such person using the platform on a full-time basis? Uh, two, three thousand K per month in Ukraine, at least at the current prices which we, which we have. And for this, he would need to have around uh, 40 employees whom he is he's, um, assisting. So it's not like a marketplace. You're, uh, you know, the company applies to you and you pick one of your advisors that you already recruited to them, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, they have, uh, each employee has an opportunity to choose from a number or try different ones and then decide with whom he want to proceed. But in general, yeah, yeah. Okay, one of the hardest problems to solve in that uh, business problem is that the, what that particular employee needs to learn and where he or she is uh, with her skills, capabilities and all that stuff. Do you have some kind of a structured uh, system to retract that information? How do you... To some extent, partially the platform helps, yeah. but the key thing that currently this learning advisor helps an employee to define the learning goals. And the sources for understanding it can be different. The first one they can understand, go to your manager and ask feedback. What does he or she think? Sometimes a learning advisor can define with an employee that, yeah, it's worth asking his peers or, or other friends or partners for feedback. Sometimes they can have performance. So it's all, it's all adjustable. That's why we don't automate it to learn it, to learn it, uh, to learn it ma manually. Uh, so the sources of information can be of different, of different type, but they do it together with an employee. Okay. Anna, you're thinking about something. Uh, I like it. <laughs> this is what can I say. Uh, what's the core of innovation? Is this like algorithm or this is just like an idea? Idea, yeah, it's like. Yeah, Yuri, you didn't core. mention the word AI, why? <laughs> yeah. You have to say it. Yeah. AI, AI so is uh, <laughs> ML and AI is Absolutely. further, but we still believe in life interaction. We, s we are developing a new concept of a teacher, but only for adults. Because these people, these are teachers whom we are used to, but there is no such a class. And I think that's an, an innovation because we're creating a new profession, actually, teacher for adults. The key thing, yeah. Another thing also important in terms of innovation, all competitors are in software, like platforms, 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 uh, but it, it, it's always lost. Employees just get lost in all these offers. With us, it's not the platform only itself. It's a person who helps to work with the platform. And we focus on high pos. So we focus on eight players. We don't go immediately cover the whole company. As a result, we have help company to uh, pr uh, to promote the culture of learning from A players to the rest. You know, when you build a platform, you can justify the amount of money you spend with people. It's a bit different. Right? Uh, yeah, and decrease the time, the money spent on exactly, content. Exactly. Last question. Yeah. Uh, so, how do you ensure the quality of this uh, learning professionals except for the certification? The biggest challenge will be for us. It's 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 true. Uh, currently, based on the uh, on their responses, based on the responses from employees, we carefully monitor it, and we think about the way how we can do the best best matching and analytic. But agree, that's the biggest challenge which we will have. But okay. we have experience in other projects. Thank you so much, Yuri. That Thank was. You. We're out of time. Thank you so much. Okay, two more teams to go. As everyone is still alive, I still people are still like like blinking their eyes. It's it's okay. Okay, next team, Els KYC and the founder Dennis. Please applause for him. <laughs> we we don't have enough credits for the music. Sorry. So so it's just like just let's let's make it like this. Okay, three minutes for you. So, hello everybody. My name is Dennis and I'm the co-founder of Electronic KYC. Real-time identity verification and onboarding. KYC is a process which you've definitely passed numerous times. For instance, when opening a bank account. And the process, the aim of the process is to establish client's identity via verification of his key documents. In combination with customer due diligence and other checks, this helps to prevent money laundering, identify fraudsters, or shell companies. While the whole process slightly differs from, uh, let's say, one industry to another, the initiate KYC is almost the same in the variety of business. Now the whole market is growing by 15% cumulative average, and there are lots of pains worth solving. But we are focusing on the business where, or on the industry where the cost of the problem is the biggest. I'm talking about banking and fintech. This industry is strictly regulated by regulatory and compliance, and they have to follow it while also focusing on customers' conversions. The recent study shows that approximately two-thirds of Europeans 
have abandoned opening a bank account since the process appeared to be too much complicated. And one third of, uh, let's say, the customers uh, didn't go to the physical branch when they were, re were requested to do so. On the other side, those banks who, uh, let's say, neglected the regulatory while m making focus on conversions were obliged to pay huge fines. This is why we've created electronic KYC. With the help of our solution, our clients can identify their customers in a blink of an eye while being fully compliant. To make it happen, we're using a bunch of technology, for instance, machine learning or optical character reader, enables to read all of the data automatically and send it to client CRM in less than one second. Well, all, we are also providing with the technology like biometric face analysis or 3D liveliness, and not only. We are very carefully listening to our customers' needs and new features will be launched soon. We already see quite a big demand for our services. We are live, we are uh, already started providing with the solution and our ambitious is to satisfy the demand which we already have and our target for the year is to reach 100K verifications uh, in one year. Of course, it is only possible with the highly professional and highly passionate team on board, and I'm really proud to be part of this team. You can try out our demo application, or I will be more than happy to show it to everyone who is interested. Thank you. Thank you so much. Seven seconds were left. Stanislav, a term sheet so on the table? Well, depends well, on the depends. answer to this question. So what's the difference with Verif on Fido and many others? Thank you for the question. Actually, we have lots of uh, competitors and we see two dimensions where we are much better. The first one is interoperability. And uh, by interoperability, I mean the flexibility of integration. We can integrate with whatever systems and the, our SDK is very flexible. So we can turn off or turn on, we can change the sequence we also very il easily integrate with governmental uh, services. Within Ukraine, it is services like Bank ID or DIA. And the next dimension is user centricity, since the conversion is one of the very important factors. We are, doing, we are doing lots of tests to make sure that the process is engaging, it is maybe even gamified, to make sure that the, the user stays to the end to open in the account. I mean, just uh, following on with that one, uh, still on the same page, like, do you have some really reliable data that you're converting more than Verif or on Dato? Uh, or you're just assuming that you're converting better than them? Look, uh, actually, uh, the data will appear after, let's say, after uh, more clients will be launched with us. Now, as I, j as I just said, we started, we've just connected one international bank and we have started, let's say, learning from them. Uh, for, for this moment, we've got only positive feedback. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the monetization model? Thank you. Actually, we are using a model which has demonstrated great results over the years and I'm talking about subscription with the focus on enterprise, so we are B2B SaaS. And yes, basically that's it. And, and so how does this compare to your competitors? Are you cheaper than them or is it different at all? Is it the same model? Look, uh, first of all, in our case, it is simplified as much as possible because competitors are doing things like they are, uh, if you want to read, for instance, these data in the passport, then you have to pay something additional. We have full package services. And also, well, um, comparing to, uh, let's say, to USA competition, we are for sure we are cheaper, like at least 30%. I was, I was going to go with the competition questions because I had the same. So let's say uh, you're not that different right now to your competition. What would you be doing? What would you be focusing on? Uh, in your roadmap, like what is there that you think would make you unique compared to any other thing? Thank you. Well, actually our current backlog is very busy 
And we are, as I mentioned, we are listening very carefully to the demand from the customers. And what would be your intuition? What's the one thing that you need to be focusing on? Long term? I think SSI. SSI? Yeah, it could be SSI. Decentralized, Can you clarify for the audience decentralized authorization okay. could be. And I think that's it. Thank, Thank you, Dennis. You. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for the amazing pitch. Yeah, applause. <laughs> and now, the one and only, the last startup to pitch, Vanongo and Katerina. Please applause her on the stage. <laughs> and we've lost, uh, yeah, we do have a click here. Here we go. Feeling like a superstar. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, we are Van and Go, and we solve the last mile logistic problem for enterprises that they faced, especially in COVID times. A little bit about our history. Uh, we have founded our company in August 2019, then played a little bit with hypothesis about B2C and uh, tailored our business model and launched our B2B MVP in August 2020. In November, we onboarded our first customer. It's one of the biggest retailer in Kazakhstan, Kaspi. And just in 10 months, we obtained the 100,000 orders. We are participating in accelerators in Ukraine and in United States. Also, uh, we're expanding our business in Kazakhstan uh, and Ukraine and Germany and new locations. Uh, why we're here and what problems actual enterprise have. First one, it's they have a zoo of different delivery companies that they need to manage. The second one, they don't have any transparency about the orders, how they are executed, and uh, they can't help their own end customers. Uh, the third one, it's end customers that are frustrated about not on time delivery, and uh, they don't come back to this enterprise for recurrent orders if they are not satisfied, and enterprises losing money. What we suggest, we suggest Van and Go ecosystem as a unique interface for enterprises for last mile logistic. Uh, with the help of our API, enterprises can be up to date in any point of the time with all the information. It's from one hand. From another, we are producing client application uh, where clients have in real time all the data about their orders. And also the third one, we are taking the care of all the driver onboarding, background checks, vehicle checks, and all the management of drivers. Market is huge, it's a 300 billion market. We are targeting on-demand logistic market. Uh, it's 75, and we want to obtain from 10, uh, seven till 10% of this market. It's obvious we are taking the brokerage fee per delivery. This is where money comes from. But also, we developed a model that allows us to decrease the price for our customers using data monetization, the data that we have, and also using non-logistic fleet that is unutilized. Uh, from the very beginning, we were a company with a global mindset, and now we are expanding our business in CE and Central Asia market. Next year, we want to more penetrate Western Europe market and uh, then United States. Uh, also, we are a team of 60 people. Our founders have uh, IT background, automotive background. They used to build already startups, and some of our founders already have a successful exit. We are now in the fundraising in pre-seed, and we are asking for one million now to scale our business. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Katerina. Why only one million? Why not five? <laughs> it's faster with five million. This is our calculation. We need okay, one. Okay, understood. Okay, let's start from you. I mean, in the eyes of the investor, uh, this is like a cool area at the moment, but at the same time, any investor will know that it's going to drain a lot of money. Uh, you're going to burn a lot of cash, and it's a very hard thing to do. For the demand side, for the need of the corporations, I totally understand but I didn't understand what, what kind of a solution you're providing. Is it like a marketplace of... <laughs> Is it like a marketplace uh, that van owner can you know, pick, pick up the order or you're 
working like a UPS, uh, you know, recruiting the van driver, owning vans. Okay, I yeah. Think that the solution part was missing. Uh, okay, uh, I will explain. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, so we have actually both models. We um, have contracts with drivers. These drivers could be from logistic companies or private entrepreneurs or for this, uh, from non-logistic uh, non companies, yeah. They could uh, work with us part-time, full-time, so we know their schedule, it's already in our system. And when we receive orders from B2B, we are uh, assigning these orders to the drivers for already verified. Some companies, for example, pre-selected the um, number of drivers with them uh, with what they want to work so it's it's I would say it's both ways so it's end marketplace because we can have like new drivers arriving and picking the orders and we have some batch of drivers that are full-time with us and we are signing orders already like pre-select -pre them for some com companies does that satisfy you <laughs> <laughs> be honest yeah. at least satisfy. once today uh, we okay. That's okay. Uh, we are actually receiving orders, and we are calculating using different machine learning algorithm optimal roads, and these roads assigned to our drivers. And our drivers, we, we it's legally not our drivers, but mentally we uh, treat them as our employees, and they are part time, full time. So we have a pool of them. We know their schedule, and we are assigning these orders according to their schedules uh, to them. And they are executing using the driver application. They are receiving this um, uh, road. Yeah, and they can execute stops, reschedule stop, uh, skip stop. So a lot of different use cases is under that, and a lot of different, I would say, logic behind that. Yes? Yeah, you're probably a bit repetitive, but you cho you're choosing to do last mile on demand, which is the hardest, and with products, which is the hardest logistics problems that there is. Yeah. And it, it seems like there's missing, how is this making it so much better to your customers? Because I think we're used to seeing hundreds of companies pitching this, and it's not really clear, other than the idea of going into this market, mm -hmm. what, is, what are your customers raving about? What is the feedback you're getting your customers that is saying, you, like, we're using you because you do this one thing like no other uh, platform has ever done? Actually, yeah, we are providing the whole ecosystem to them. So uh, each party benefits from us and we can decrease the price for B2B clients, yeah, about the last mile logistic with the help of our data monetization using non-logistic fleet and optimization of the roads using our own machine learning algorithms. So this is- And the cars are play. nice, you see? Cars <laughs> are very nice. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Um, for Caspi, do they give you a guaranteed amount of orders? And then how do you think about a strategic relationship with you know, each e-commerce player? Because it's generally one player is going to make most of the market. And yeah, in, in Kazakhstan it's true. Yeah, they are the biggest. They are making the most orders in Kazakhstan. And yes, we have some uh, threshold yeah, for with them. Uh, of orders and we are opening new locations. So we started in Almaty, also we started uh, Astana, we started Karaganda and we are expanding inside the uh, Kazakhstan and new orders come. I would say it's not a question of how much they can uh, give us, it's also how much we can execute because they can give us <laughs> a lot of orders. Okay. okay, and I see only 10 seconds left, so Katerina. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for an amazing pitch. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last pitch for today. And now I'd like to ask you for a five minutes break. You can run to the toilet, you can run outside because there will be a lot of tears, a lot of applause, etc., etc., etc. We need our jury to make a very tough decision. Who will get the main prize? I ask you to come back in five minutes, right here, right now, and then we will know the free winning teams. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please come back to the hall. We have only...
17,000 words to tell you loudly on the stage, to thank all the jury, thank everyone, you know the drill, it's, it's usually the same. Yeah, everyone's back, everyone's back. So, once again, thank you so much for all of the 10 pitching teams. It's not easy to pitch on the last day of the conference when the only thing on mind is something liquid that enhances your attention and uh, makes you happy, etc., etc., etc. I'd like to invite uh, the chairman of the jury, Anna, to join me on stage. Please applause her. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, thank you. From what I know, the jury has made its mind. Is that correct? Very tough decision, but we done. Really? Really, yeah. It took you like, what, two minutes? Well, I think we all have the same uh, ideas and the same, um, we focus in the same companies, so it was... So, uh, the votes were done. pretty equal, I understand, right? It's okay, yeah. Anything spectacular you saw during the pitches that Absolutely. you liked? Absolutely. Absolutely. The winners, of course. Okay. Anything else? All these people, it's, uh, we're so impressed. It's really thank you for being here and really thank you for all these ideas and all these technologies. You're really great. I'm impressed. And we're all impressed, I think. Yeah, I'd like to applaud all the teams exactly. that were pitching. <laughs> so, will we have these drums earing now? They're technicians. Do you have some music for the third place? That will be announced in a second. Okay. And the third place is. Ta -dum, ta -dum, ta -dum. Ta -dum, ta -dum, ta -dum. Where's the sound? Organization wait, wait. GG. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. And we already have the winner. Where are Please you? Come welcome on. on stage, organization.gg. Thank you very much. Winner speech. Now you have to explain the name of the. You're very welcome in our project in uh, like Connect uh, Poland Prize. Thank you, I'm very pleased um, to get the prize and just to be here. And thank you to all the judges for, for the votes and for believing in us. And um, there's a lot more to come. Thank you. It was a really great presentation. Please stay, please stay, please stay, please stay, 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 stay. That's the least you can do, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, the second place goes to... That's said now or Sorry? later, now, later. Yeah, we can wait. wait if you want to say something else. Like uh, atmosphere goes... <laughs> okay. And, and the, the winner, winner is... Zilly. Zilly, congratulations! <laughs> Jump on the stage for the winner's speech. She never walks on the red, red light on the street, I see that, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, it is really a great opportunity for us. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. You're great. Okay. And the main idea here is like the first. She says, this, this is the, the part winner. where you start to thank all the sponsors. Then you say like what you heard during two days, you know, or what they, any new acquaintances you have. It's just, we, we need to, we need to just like make yeah. everyone the nervous, you know? The temperature go higher and higher. Yes. And higher. Can we have a music higher and higher yeah, the and higher? Yeah, please. And the first and place so goes to... Okay. Naughty and I. Yeah. Congratulations. Come on to us. Congratulations, yeah, and you know the winner is like, um, okay, take uh, Thank first. you guys, I was not expecting it, but thank you. <laughs> no, I just want to like, you know, ah. the, um, too many things, yeah, this is it. Okay, and our jury, maybe they can welcome. Yeah, and um, their jury, please join us on yeah. stage. All the teams that were pitching, please also join us on stage for this momentum that we want to remember forever. Okay, and the photo? Uh, yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. The reporters. Who, who wants to manage the process? <laughs> Come to the front. You jump, you jump, huh? huh? Okay, can you do it? Yeah, you have closer, yeah? 
It's fine? Uh, can you guys go narrower, please, please? No, 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 no. Pretend that you're in the same class, 8B, you know? You're, you're on, on vacation. Just, just stand closer, please. Huh? It's good? And now do something funny, you know how to do like hand something like that, like you just won a fucking million euros. This is how it looks. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so there's. Thank you for staying for two full amazing days of speeches, panels, and speakers, and investors, and of course, speeches. Uh, from on the behalf of all of the organizers, I'm thanking all of the sponsors and partners. I thank you all for spending so much time together with us. And we wish you an amazing weekend, and hopefully see you next year. Thank you so much. See you, and have an amazing weekend, everyone.